Welcome to our fourth episode of Turning the Red Planet Green. In our journey to make Mars more Earth-like, let's delve into the scientific endeavors aimed at transforming its barren landscape into a thriving ecosystem. In today's episode, we explore the groundbreaking methods proposed to create a thicker Martian atmosphere, the pivotal role of greenhouse gases in potentially warming the Red Planet, and the visionary ideas to artificially generate a protective magnetic field. To initiate the terraforming of Mars, one fundamental goal is to thicken its thin atmosphere. While the Martian polar caps, minerals, and soil harbor carbon dioxide and water which could contribute to this process, recent studies, such as those by the MAVEN science team, suggest that even utilizing all available sources on Mars would only increase atmospheric pressure to about 7% of Earth's, which is insufficient for human habitation. Proposed methods for augmenting the atmosphere include deploying large orbital mirrors to reflect sunlight and heat the Martian surface, establishing greenhouse gas-producing factories to trap solar radiation, and even the audacious idea of directing ammonia-rich asteroids towards Mars to elevate greenhouse gas levels. The role of greenhouse gases is integral to the concept of warming Mars. These gases, such as carbon dioxide, CO2, and hydrogen, H2, potentially released from volcanic activity, could, according to climate simulations, warm Mars above the freezing point of water, hinting at a past where liquid water might have been abundant. In theory, introducing additional greenhouse gases to the Martian environment could lead to a cascade of melting and warming, thickening the atmosphere and increasing atmospheric pressure. Detailed calculations regarding certain super greenhouse gases like chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, and others have led to optimism about the feasibility of such terraforming efforts. The absence of a substantial magnetic field on Mars presents a significant challenge as it leaves the planet vulnerable to harmful solar wind and radiation. Scientists have proposed the creation of an artificial magnetic field to protect the planet. Strategies for this include situating a magnetic dipole shield at Mars L1 Lagrange point, where the gravitational forces of Mars and the Sun balance each other. This shield could effectively create a magnetotail to protect Mars. Other suggestions have been to utilize Mars moon Phobos to create an artificial magnetic field via a plasma torus, or to restart the planet's internal magnetic dynamo by drastic means, such as heating Mars's iron core. The concept of generating an artificial charged particle ring around Mars, akin to a radiation belt, has also been considered as a solution requiring the least power and mass. As we continue to sculpt our vision of a greener Mars, let's engage in a thought experiment. Imagine a future where humankind has achieved the monumental task of terraforming Mars. In this imagined world, we've successfully thickened the Martian atmosphere and warmed the planet. How did we reach this point? The answer lies in the fusion of colossal engineering feats and a deep understanding of planetary science. Let's consider the process in greater detail. To thicken the Martian atmosphere, we would have needed to introduce vast amounts of greenhouse gases. This could have been done by constructing factories that release these gases as byproducts. For instance, the production of perfluorocarbons, potent greenhouse gases, could trap enough heat to initiate a significant warming effect on the planet. We would have also been able to harness the sublimation of the CO2 from the polar ice caps by spreading dark dust transported from Mars moons, Phobos and Deimos to absorb more sunlight and accelerate the warming process. In our thought experiment, we've also overcome one of the greatest challenges to making Mars habitable, recreating a protective magnetic field. Using advanced plasma physics, we've established an artificial magnetic field by constructing a colossal magnetic shield at the L1 Lagrange point. This shield mimics Earth's magnetosphere, deflecting solar winds and cosmic radiation thus preventing the atmosphere we've worked so hard to thicken from being stripped away. Furthermore, imagine a Mars where we've utilized its moons in our terraforming efforts. 
By equipping Phobos with equipment capable of ejecting charged particles, we've created an artificial magnetosphere. This not only protects the surface from solar radiation, but also supports the retention and thickening of the atmosphere. Let's delve deeper into the magnetic field aspect. In our imagined future, we've perhaps found a way to restart Mars's internal dynamo. While this task is beyond our current capabilities, requiring unfathomable amounts of energy, in our scenario, future technologies have allowed us to heat the Martian core, reactivating its magnetic field and restoring a vital protective shield against cosmic and solar radiation. Now, why is all of this important? Because a thicker atmosphere and a warmer climate could potentially allow liquid water to exist on the surface of Mars, paving the way for life. We've known that Mars was once warm enough for liquid water to be stable on its surface, which suggests that it may have been hospitable to life in its ancient past. By recreating these conditions, we could possibly see the emergence of life forms adapted to the new Martian environment. As our exploration into terraforming Mars unfolds, it's time to turn the lens towards you, the viewer. Imagine you are part of this grand journey to reshape an entire world. What role would you choose in this epic endeavor? Would you be a scientist unraveling the mysteries of Martian soil, an engineer crafting the colossal structures needed to warm a planet, or perhaps a pioneer, one of the first to set foot on the transformed Martian dunes? Ponder this, as the terraforming process would require not just technological might, but the collective will and imagination of humanity. Consider the ethical dimensions of such an undertaking. Should we, as a species, alter another world to suit our needs? What balance must we strike between exploration and preservation? In our thought experiment, we've conjured images of vast factories churning out greenhouse gases to warm Mars. But what of the implications? Could such actions trigger unforeseen consequences? Could we inadvertently create a runaway greenhouse effect, as Venus experienced, leading to a scorching, inhospitable world? And what about the magnetic field? The idea of a man-made shield in space to protect our second home is thrilling, but it also raises questions. How do we ensure the stability of such a system? Could the artificial manipulation of planetary environments pose risks to Mars or even Earth? Let's also consider the potential of life on a terraformed Mars. If we do find native Martian organisms, how do we proceed? Do we have the right to alter their habitat for our needs, or should Mars remain untouched to preserve its original state and potential indigenous life forms? These are profound questions, and they demand thoughtful discussion. As much as this series is about the science and engineering behind terraforming, it's also about sparking conversation and contemplation. So we invite you, our viewers, to engage with these questions. What are your thoughts on the ethical considerations of terraforming Mars? How would you contribute to the creation of a new world? Could Mars be a new cradle for life, a testament to our technological prowess? Or should it remain a pristine world, untouched by human hands? Comment below with your opinions, ideas, and visions for the future of Mars. Your insights are invaluable as we continue this series, and perhaps one day, as we venture to turn these dreams into reality. In envisioning a terraformed Mars, water is a key element, not just for its life-sustaining properties, but also as a crucial component of the atmosphere. While the next episode will delve deeply into the mysteries of Martian water, it's essential to touch upon the significance of water in the context of terraforming. Mars is a desert world today, but evidence suggests it was once laced with river valleys and lakes. The planet's polar ice caps, composed of water and carbon dioxide ice, serve as a reminder of the abundant resources that could potentially be harnessed in the terraforming process. The utilization of this water ice, possibly through a process of controlled sublimation, would contribute to the atmospheric pressure and could initiate the hydrological cycle, a system where water evaporates, forms clouds, and falls back to the surface as precipitation. But where could this water come from? Scientists are investigating the feasibility of extracting subsurface ice reservoirs. These ice deposits, 
protected from the harsh surface conditions, could be vast enough to fill lakes and seas on a new Mars. The technology required to mine and process this ice would be revolutionary, representing a synergy between robotic and human ingenuity. We must also consider the role of imported resources. Could we redirect comets rich in ice to impact Mars, delivering water and organic compounds? This method, while dramatic, could potentially offer a dual benefit of delivering water and heating the atmosphere through the energy of the impact. Moreover, the presence of water on a terraformed Mars would not only sustain human settlers, but could also support agriculture, turning Martian regolith into fertile soil. Genetically modified organisms, such as extremophiles capable of withstanding Martian conditions, could be integral to this process breaking down soil and releasing essential nutrients. As we reach the end of today's journey across the theoretical landscapes of a terraformed Mars, we pause to reflect on the magnitude of what lies ahead. The vision we have painted is not a mere flight of fancy, but a beacon guiding us toward what could be humanity's most profound achievement. We stand on the precipice of tomorrow gazing out at a horizon where science fiction edges ever closer to science fact. To you, our viewers, we extend our deepest gratitude for joining us on this extraordinary voyage. Your curiosity fuels the narrative of progress, and your engagement is the heartbeat of this series. As we contemplate the transformation of Mars, we also celebrate the ingenuity and spirit that define our species. In our next installment, we will cultivate our understanding of agriculture on the Red Planet. We'll unearth the secrets of Martian soil, investigate how we could grow crops in an alien environment, and the breakthroughs necessary to sustain farming on a planet millions of miles from Earth. From the potential of genetically modified organisms to the innovations in automated farming technologies, we will examine the green shoots of progress that could lead to self-sustaining colonies on Mars. This venture into extraterrestrial agriculture is not just about survival, but about thriving in a new world, and it promises to be a captivating chapter in our continuing saga. Until we meet again to continue this grand adventure, we thank you for watching. Stay tuned, stay curious, and keep reaching for the stars. The quest to turn the red planet green continues, and we are honored to have you with us on this journey of transformation and discovery. Farewell until we unravel the secrets of agriculture on Mars in the next episode of Turning the Red Planet Green.